Alright, fine. I will admit that I fucked up in not listening to these instead of while I was watching the other ones. I missed a heck of a lot of information, and it's not good for me if I'm trying to figure out where the stories go. So, I'm sorry. Well, got, we got these. We have Chapter 5, Calamity, which is the pony that nearly murderized Pip. So, let's, let's, just, let's just get into it. Let's watch it. No, I told you so's. <sighs> so stupid. Alive. I was still alive. As consciousness came back to me, I found myself laying on a mattress with blankets tucked about me, feeling warm and rested and far more comfortable than I you had survived. before I left Stable 2 three days ago. You have survived! At least, I thought it was three days ago. I had no idea how long I'd been unconscious. By habit, I lifted up my forehoof to check the date and time on my pit buck. Doing so unsettled the blanket, which proceeded to slide to the floor. Oh, look who's awake! The pretty voice of a mare awfully close to me shocked me into full alertness. Looking up and about, I found myself surrounded by several ponies, only one of which I recognized. And that was the Pegasus who shot me in the, in the <laughs> first place. I wondered if I was his prisoner. The voice had come from an equally pretty white-coated earth pony whose cotton candy pink mane matched the pink and yellow striped nurse's dress she was wearing. Mm -hmm. Scanning what I nurse. could see of the walls nurse of the dress? small crowd of ponies, I saw a line of three medical boxes, all the little pink butterflies perfectly in a row, and a faded pre-war poster apparently advertising jobs in health care services. You don't need to be a steel ranger to be a hero. Join the Ministry of Peace today, announced the mayor on the poster. Ministry of Peace! Philly, who wore the exact same dress that I saw brought to life before me. Between the decor and the lack of ropes or chains, I concluded this was a clinic, and I was not a captive. Besides, I was actually feeling quite good. Tired, almost like I needed a good nap. Except I was I could use a good nap right now. Just tired and kind of warm. I sat up, and the room spun. Take it easy there, partner. The Pegasus, whose name I recalled was Calamity, although I was a bit how? busy on how I had learned that, said, and, oh, stepping uh, towards uh, me. Sure. I scooted back on the mattress. Oh, sure, he looked polite and gentle now with all these ponies around, but I'd seen when he was all murder from above, guns blazing, death Pegasus. Candy? One of the other ponies, a gray-coated earth pony with a black mane and tail, candy? asked as he looked to my nurse. I although want to candy. me it sounded like he was calling her Candy. And I felt an oddly cheerful urge to agree. Oh, she'll be perfectly fine. I mixed up the last healing potion she needed and gave it to her less than an hour ago. Mixed? The mixed? gray earth pony raised an eyebrow dubiously. Candy smiled. Why, with apple snaps, of course. I find the medicine always goes down better that way. I couldn't understand why. The okay. pony face hoofed. I felt perfectly fine now. Better than fine. And pleasantly warm. The gray stallion started shooing all of my guests away. That made me feel slightly sad, although I really didn't know any of them. Oh. It felt so lonely these last few days, so eager to find civilization. Don't make Here me start was, singing Akon right now. He wasn't letting me keep it. A thought which I realized didn't quite make sense, although I wasn't sure why. Come on out when you're feeling up to it. I know there's some ponies who'd like to see you. The gray stallion smiled at me, then looked at the rust-colored straggler. You too, Calamity. Out you go. Calamity took one look back at me before scooting out. Candy pranced up to me and whispered dreamily, Such a handsome stallion, isn't he? <laughs> Who? Why, Calamity, of course, she giggled. I was at a loss for words. What? No, no I wasn't. Her barn he door didn't me. swing that way. She waved that off with a hoof wiggle. I'm sure it was just misunderstanding. It was, I recalled, but why was I having this conversation? If anything, I wanted to talk about how pretty Candy, not Candy, Candy, not talk about Calamity. Okay, Pip. Whether or not he was handsome. None of which seemed to find a suitable way to be spoken aloud. Sulkingly, I fell back on reiterating, He shot me, then added, A lot. <laughs> More rested and with a much clearer head, I was eager to meet the ponies of New Appaloosa. New I'm Appaloosa, okay. I'd been out for nearly two days. I gazed over the railing at the walled village. Multiple that's, lines of what I that's realized a journey you made. tracks converged into a town made of largely of dozens upon dozens of virtually identical homes built from old passenger cars, many of them stacked two or three high. Most still had their wheels. Heavy metal boxcars formed a ring around the town, with a massive gate on either side. 
armed pony guards walked around the tops of the boxcars, keeping their eyes on the wastes outside. Inside, scores of earth and unicorn ponies trotted about their daily lives. The place was dirty, rusty, and altogether wonderful. How did you get them stacked like that? I asked, looking up at the stacked train cars, the tallest group being four high. Railing and catwalks spanned out from it, connecting to other towers. On the highest roof, brilliantly glowing letters announced Turnpike Tavern. Railright, the gray and black stallion who had turned out to be the sheriff slash mayor slash general hold togetherer of the town, deadpanned, had one of them unicorn ponies do it. I turned with a gasp, staring at him. I'd never heard of a pony levitating anything that big or heavy before. Railright held that serious expression just a moment longer before chortling. I'm just playing with you. My astonishment faded into a sheepish grin as he smiled and pointed towards the sky behind us. That's what the crane is for. Looking back up, I could see the huge orange tower of metal jutting out above the town, a massive hook dangling from its long arm. Although, he continued, if you're looking for heavy lipster, you can't do better than crane. You should talk to him. Talk to the crane? I said slowly, trying to gauge if this was another joke. But it wasn't. Crane, he told me, was the name of a unicorn pony who worked in the train yard. Won't find a better and stronger telekinetic this side of the Candlelot ruins. Huh. With that, Railroad offered to give me a grand tour. New Appaloosa's general supply store was called Absolutely Everything. It was the fourth stop on the tour. Absolutely everything. As he coaxed me towards the odd-looking building. Three train cars, each a different type, had been fused together to create the store. One of them was a barrel-shaped car of black metal dominated by a smokestack. This was one of the sources of smoke I had seen in the distance. Pausing in front of the door, I read the signs beneath the playful block letters of the store name. Yes, I do deliveries. No hooves, no nasty stingers, no service. Ask me about special orders. I won't answer, but I'll get right on it. Wasteland Survival Guide, available now. First copy for every family is free. I pushed the door open and stepped inside, and stopped when I gasped as I saw the zombie pony from the Raider Library. I could tell this thing she was is an the hour one, long. I don't think I'm going to watch the in entire fact, thing at this one, one in one sitting. Right smile and dashed over to give me an uncomfortably squishy hug, or admittedly also cues. She back-trotted and waved a forehoof about in what was a surprisingly effective combination of welcoming and showing off the store. Something I hated to admit I was thankful for. The stench of her as she hugged me forced me to hold my breath. I had been sure gagging would have been impolite. Um, hello again? I said, feeling a little awkward. Last time the Pegasus zombie pony saw me, I was trotting off to put a bullet in a raider's brain pan. <laughs> Howdy, said a familiar voice off to my left. I'd been so focused on the zombie pony that I'd totally missed that there were other people in the store. Turned other ponies, not Clamity people. Looking back at me with a bashful smile. Look, before you scamper, I just want to say how sorry I am. I didn't scamper, although I did take a cautious step back. <laughs> I've been getting the story from Ditsy Doo here, see? Ditsy Doo. I turned to the Pegasus zombie. You wrote the Wasteland Survival Guide? What? Both Ditsy Doo's eyes managed to focus on me, and she was absolutely beaming with joy. Derpy! Yes, I do deliveries. Suddenly, I had a very good idea how that book ended up in Ponyville Library. I'm not that big of a Derpy fan, but... My Yay, Derpy! Water. While I was thinking, Ditsy Doo had rushed up, another copy of the book in her mouth, and was stuffing it into my saddlebags. The zombie pony was amazingly kind and generous, and had the severe problem with personal space. I opened my mouth to say something, and maybe that I already had a copy. Although, considering there had been several pages torn out of the copy on the raider's table, having another could be quite helpful. Yes. However, whatever I was about to say got derailed by a strange realization. You don't talk much, do you? Can zombie ponies talk? Ditsy Doo stepped back and opened her muzzle wide, giving me more of a look inside of her mouth than I had ever wanted. Calamity focused my attention. Ditsy Doo's tongue was cut out by slavers a few decades ago. Oh, God. She gets by real well without it, though. So then, Monterey Jack's warning had been cringingly accurate. That's so sad. Ditsy Doo trotted to the sales counter, where she picked up a pencil in her teeth and scribbled something on the first sheet of a lard pad of notepaper. She dropped the pencil and held up the notepad, her eye going weird again. Looking strictly at the paper so my gaze didn't rudely follow her eye, I <laughs> 
Because I couldn't talk, I took up writing. If it hadn't been for that, I would never have gotten so good at it. I looked up at her with a blink. Very good. Did do put down the pad, picking up the pencil again, and added a line before lifting it again for me to read. Now, how about we get you some better armor? Bottle caps? That's what ponies use for money out here. As absurd as it was, uh, it was absolutely ludicrous. I should have seen that coming. That's cute. No wonder the raiders were hoarding the things. It's cute, no wonder though. there were empty bottles littered everywhere, but not a bottle cap to be found. Except, of course, for the one I tossed casually away somewhere outside Ironshot Firearms. My stable utility barding was back at absolutely everything. Ditsy Doo didn't have any armor in my size, but she swore she could modify my barding so it was better than the best armor any raider could scrounge together. She offered to do it for free, but I insisted on paying her for work. And that's when I discovered that the absolutely cockeyed, no offense to Ditsy, bar mm. system used throughout the equestrian wasteland. Bottle caps. Seriously. Fortunately, free war money was still worth something, if only in bulk. If for no other reason than they could get sodas out of the few vending machines that hadn't simply been pried open and raided already. Ditsy Doo took all but a few of my coins. I had no idea if what I'd given her was a fair price, but I suspect I was getting a generous discount. She also insisted on giving me a sheet of paper detailing an entirely different use for bottle caps, a way to turn them into homemade mines. Um, apparently, it was going to be an answer for the baby mines? survival guides chapter on mines, but some pony wisely discouraged her from including it. When I had left absolutely everything, Railwright commented, Ditsy Doo's our resident Pegasus, as well as our resident ghoul. Right, because ghoul pony sounds so much better than zombie pony. <laughs> Although, he continued, poking a hoof towards Calamity, I keep telling this one he's always welcome to settle down here in my town. He's been keeping the caravan safe going on for four years now. Now, as I was on my way to meet Crane, with Calamity trotting along beside me, I finally ventured conversation with the rust-colored stallion. So, you don't live here? Nope. Got my own place about half an hour's flat distant. I thought over what I knew of Pegasus ponies. A place up in the clouds? I could swear Calamity's eyes just widened a bit. Oh no, 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 no. Just a shack. Something some pony threw together a few generations ago. I think the clouds would be much safer. Get eaten by wild animals in these here parts. I'd already encountered some of these wild animals in these parts. As we walked down the catwalk, my gaze fell on the strange weapon that Calamity wore, my eyes following from the gun barrels to the odd metal protrusion that stuck out in front of him. A control mechanism, I suspected. I opened my mouth to ask him about it, only to find myself looking at air. I stopped and looked back. He had halted abruptly to let by a mare in a straw sun hat and her colt. The mare was apparently having trouble keeping the colt from dashing off at top speed. She looked like she wanted the leash. But Ma, I want to go see Derpy. Yay! He leaned close and whispered. That's what some folks call Ditsy do, Cause the eye. Yeah, that's what they'd focus on. The eye. The bullies back in Stable 2 would totally have ignored the whole putrefying flesh thing for that. She doesn't seem to mind. I actually think she finds it endearing. I didn't point Derp. out that Ditsy do didn't seem to mind having her tongue cut out either. <laughs> didn't make it right. Trolley, you get back here. The mother called out as the colt started to trot a little too fast. And you stay away from that store. I don't want you bothering that thing. Thing? What? Okay, I'll admit, I'd thought of her as an it a few times. But that was back when I thought she was dead. I stopped. Excuse me, miss. I'm new here. Is there something wrong about za- Ghoul ponies? <laughs> the mare looked abashed, staring more at Calamity than me. I didn't need to look. I could feel his scowl. Well, nothing up against good old Derpy. I mean, Miss Ditty do. But, well, you know. Know what? I persisted, trying not to hint at the shame I was feeling for having balled at her smell, mm -mm. the whole grossly squishy way her hug felt. Well, the mare looked about furtively, then lowered her head, whispering, You know what they're all like, ticking time bombs, right? I mean, you can see what being a ghoul is doing to your outsides. Imagine what it's doing to their brains. They all go mad sooner or later. Dear Ditsy, she's lasted a good long time. She's mm -hmm. only a little crazy for it. But someday... I just don't want my boy to hurry that long, none. Nor be there when she finally does turn on us all. With that, the mare drew herself up. Anyways, how close, old is Derpy in this? Away, notably, from absolutely everything. I stood there for a long time, stunned. Finally, I asked Calamity. Is that true? Calamity sighed deeply, which was not a good sign. Yep. For most of them, anyway. You get into the wrong places, 
You find yourself hunted by whole packs of cannibal ghoul ponies gone zombie. Oh god. But, and I mean this, that's only most of them. And even the good pony folk. So it zombie pony isn't until that day. the most inappropriate Some, like term. do break the odds and never lose their noodle. I understood the spirit of the words, but the news didn't make me scared of the hairless Pegasus writer. It made me ache for her. Crane was a yellow unicorn pony with an orange and beige striped mane and tail. He wore a bright orange construction hat with a hole in it for his horn. When we found him, he was loading barrels onto the flatbed of a train car. This one actually still on the tracks that ran through town and connected to several others. Howdy. Pleased to meet the little mare with the pit buck who saved Sweet Apple and Ditsy Doo. Not to mention Desert Rose, Barrel Cactus, and Turquoise. What? He stopped to shake my hoof vigorously. Pleased to meet you, too. I smiled, feeling a touch wobbly after the hoofshake. Railroad told me you're the pony to talk to if I wanted to see some heavy lifting. Crane smiled, then casually lifted three barrels at once, putting mm -hmm. them in their places on the flatbed. Reckon I am. Then, to my shock, he asked, What kind of spells you got? Spells? I replied hesitantly. You know... You Chick's been living in a stable her whole life. She don't know by, nothing. Glowing the same light as shown from his horn. Unicorn ponies generally have a small collection of magical spells usually related to what he or she is destined to be good at. Except for the ones that are destined to be good at spells, of course, because then they get a whole heap of them. Me, for instance. I can make all manner of repairs to the rails and trains just by focusing at them. Crap. Cooking a hoof of the ground, I sighed deeply. <sighs> nope. Just telekinesis. No spells. I knew it was pathetic. Levitation was basic Philly stuff. By the time I got my cutie mark, every other unicorn in Stable 2 had a nice collection of spells. Thank you, Crane, for reminding me that I was probably the most unmagical unicorn ever. It's okay. Crane's eyes widened in surprise, and he quickly changed the subject. Now I've got lots of work to do, but I tell you what. If y'all would do a small favor, I'll return it by teaching you everything I know about heavy lifting. Sounded great to me. Yeah. What's the favor? Fetch him a soda, maybe some lunch, help tie down the barrels in the flatbed. We've been having a small bit of trouble with the things that have been crawling up out of that old stable west of here. From what I hear, y'all are my brave and ain't no slouch with slinging a firearm. Just get down to the stable and close the door. I reckon we can clear out the vomits up here if some pony locks off their breeding grounds. Okay, not a soda run. So, why are you with me again? The sky had darkened prematurely. I would soon have to turn on my lamp spell up my pit. Fuck. I figured I owe you one, Calamity said earnestly as he followed beside me. Maybe a whole mess of ones, considering all the good you did for the good pump. I would soon have to turn on my lamp spell up my pit buck. So to run. So, why are you with me again? The sky had darkened prematurely. I would soon have to turn on my lamp spell up my pit buck. I figured I owe you one, Calamity said earnestly yeah, as he followed beside me. Yeah, for shooting and almost me. killing you. Maybe a whole mess of ones, considering all the good you did for the good ponies in New Appaloosa. With a sigh, I tried to console him. You couldn't have known. I was wearing blood-caked raider armor. And carrying an arsenal that would make the average raider radioactive and envy. A little bit. Caked in raider blood. Armor you only had because you needed protection while saving the lives of five good towns ponies. Only four, really. Ditsy do save Sweet Apple. And you saved Ditsy do so she could save Sweet Apple. In my book, that makes five. He took a deep breath. Besides, I can't consent to you going down there alone. I've heard dark stories about those stables. Bad, bad things happened down there, and too many of them. I came from a stable. Hell, every pony came from some pony who came from a stable, right? I can see why it would be an inviting nesting ground, but it's not like the stables are cursed or sinister. Calamity mulled that over. I suppose you're right about that. All except the few like Ditsy do who somehow survived the apocalypse on the surface, or are descended from the folks who did. I halted my trot so abruptly I nearly fell over. My surviving canteen, refilled, swung out and back, smacking me in the chest. Ditsy do survive the war? She's that old? Uh, yep. Ghoul ponies don't age like normal pony folk. The idea of a pony who had actually been around way back then, who actually knew what happened... How Derby won the war! Calamity snorted a laugh. So long I couldn't even guess the most of it. I do know she was flying outside clouds there when the first mega spell hit it. She was caught at the very edge of the magical energies that wiped out the entire city. Been a ghoul ever since. I nodded, continuing on in my solemn silence. The image of an entire city in the clouds filled with Pegasus ponies played out in my head. 
there one minute, and then just nothing. Yeah, that's the sad. clouds above started to leak. It was like being in a shower back at Staple 2. Only the shower was everywhere, and it didn't stop. If I hadn't been cleaned by Candy the day before, I would have welcomed it, despite the cold of the water. Now, soaked to the bone, I just found it miserable. The sky had turned so dark I had to turn on my pit box lamp spell to see ahead of me. In theory, it was still daylight, but that was hard to believe. <laughs> a ferocious wind had picked up out of nowhere and was whipping the rain at us like a weapon. What's going on? I cried out to Calamity above the storm. It's a thunderstorm, and a mighty big one. We best be finding some shelter because it's getting started. Thunderstorm? I hollered back as a patch of clouds lit up briefly but brilliantly. What's thunder? Oh my Kaboom. god. The sky exploded. It was the sound of a gunshot, if the gun was wielded by Celestia herself, and made out of pure awesome. <laughs> I actually tried hiding under Calamity. Get a hold of yourself there! Timidly, and a little bashfully, I backed up and got on my hooves. Another flash illuminated the whole countryside in stark white and shadow, gone before I realized it had happened. Another mighty boom tore the sky, following close behind the flash. Boom. Calamity had to put his four hooves on me to stop me from trying it again. If y'all are so scared of the thunder, wait till you actually see the lightning. He uh oh. Now let's get to moving so as we can find some shelter. Each flash of light in the clouds was followed by a terrifying crack or a mighty boom. Mm. A little later, I did indeed see the lightning. I'd been envisioning lightning bolts like this blast of electricity like the brain box had been shooting at me. This was nothing like that. This was a white tear through the sky, like the universe itself had been slashed open. It lasted an eye blink, but I still saw its afterimage floating in front of my face for several minutes later. I also saw some pony, or I thought I did, in the far distance on a hilltop, briefly illuminated by the lightning. I couldn't tell if it was a unicorn or a pegasus. At first, I thought it was both. But the vision was gone before I could be sure I had seen anything at all. We galloped, the ground beneath us increasingly muddy and treacherous, until we were forced to stop by a raging, frothy river. The muddy, rushing water was tearing away at the banks on each side. I could see the black shapes of uprooted dead trees as they were carried away. Just beyond the other side rose a cliff face. Water was pouring down the cracks of the cliff in a hundred rivulets, each feeding into the river at the bottom. Across from us, just a little way up the cliff, was the dark mouth of a cave. The path up to it was already washed away. I stood there, staring helplessly, trying to figure out how we were going to get across. Then, I felt myself being lifted into the air as Calamity flew us over the river and set me down on the mouth of the cave, feeling quite stupid. <laughs> I stepped further in, shining the lamp of my pit buck into the cave. The path continued up about a yard, then took a steep decline with frightfully old metal stairs, rusted nearly black, leading to a concrete landing. Once at the landing, the rough walls were replaced by stonework. At the end, a very familiar-looking steel door hung open on its hinge arm. The number 24 was emblazoned on the center of the door. Beyond lay a rusted, ruined doppelganger of the place I had once believed would forever be my home. Clammy rushed past me. Don't stand there gawking. Help me get this door shut before that damn river spills its banks completely and floods this hole. Lord. I was trying to push the door physically. I looked down, noticing for the first time that the floor of the cave was already a puddle, two inches deep and growing. Moved to action, I rushed to the controls. I paused long enough to check the bolting mechanism, which was actually entirely missing and making sure I'd be able to open it again. Sat aside that I could, or tried to push up the lever, but it wouldn't budge. Focusing, my horn glowing brightly, I added my telekinetic strength to that of my hooves. With a loud, grinding sound, the lever moved. With a wheeze, the lever arm moved, and the door to Stable 24 slammed shut, groaning in protest. You realize we just shut ourselves in to the evil, scary stable of spookiness, right? I teased my self-invited companion as he stared about the place in wonder. I... I'm trusting you're right about what you said earlier. Reckon if any pony knows better, it would be you. He shot me a nervous smile. Besides, he added, flapping his wings, not like these are gonna do me any good down here, one way or the other. My eyes caught the harness Calamity wore. The Pegasus had twin long-range rifles, one strapped to each side of his body right under his wings, built into a saddle mechanism. Thin metal reins reached out in front of him, ending in a bit that hovered a few inches below his mouth. By biting on it, 
the sibling barrels would fire at once. The saddle was designed to reload on command, possibly triggered by pulling on the bit or biting differently. I couldn't tell. Hey, Calamity, I've been meaning to ask you, what is that? I pointed the hoof at the contraption. What? He looked around, spinning in place. I couldn't suppress a laugh. He stopped looking at me, then back behind him again once more before. What do you mean? My battle saddle? I nodded. Fine piece of work, ain't it? I designed it myself. He reared up, showing off proudly. Then, after my experience... Battle asked, saddle. You mean to tell me you ain't never seen a battle saddle before? I shook my head. Well, ain't that a thing? He strutted about. There's basically two types of firearms, loosely speaking. There's the small ones that the pony can stick in his mouth and levitate round if he's a unicorn. Then, there's battle saddles, for all the firearms that are just too big and heavy to have, and too much kicked to wielded without support. Now, I've seen all kinds of weapons built into battle saddles. Machine guns, rocket launchers. Rocket launchers? My tail drooped and ears fell back at the thought. <laughs> Even magical energy weapons. He paused. Though those are so damn scarce, you're not likely to ever see one of them yourself. I filed that away for future reference. After checking my pit buck for radiation or similar dangers, and the EFS for any glows of hostility, I took a long gulp from my canteen and began plotting our course. I was confident from my lifetime in a stable that I could navigate this one with no problems. If the layout was the same, the door to the right in the next room should lead to the stairs headed downward. That would be the cafeteria, living quarters, school, and clinic. To the left, a corridor leading deeper into maintenance, including the ever-familiar pit buck technician maintenance stall. Without a second thought, I decided we'd go right first. Calamity, meanwhile, had scouted all the immediately adjacent rooms. He came back with a mildly surprised look. They got a box of dynamite in the storage room over yonder. Okay, that was a bit surprising. I felt my ears stick up. You weren't going to find that in Stable 2. What was in it? Dynamite, I reckon, Clammy said, mock scholarly. In truth, I don't know for sure. It was locked, and I wasn't about to go shaking it like a birthday present. I am intrigued, that's why I'm not talking a lot. On the off chance, it might be full of, you know, dynamite. I followed the rust-colored Pegasus back to the storage room to check it out. But, after three tries and loss of two more bobby pins, which I was beginning to run alarmingly low on, I had to admit the lock was beyond even my self-proclaimed expertise. Instead, I suggested we move on along the path I originally planned. The door to the living quarter slid open with a reassuring hiss. The lights gave off a familiar whine, those that still worked. Already, Stable 24 was making me horribly homesick. Worse, the dull ache in my heart mixed with a disconcerting sense of wrongness. Seeing this place in rust and ruins was unpleasant in a way that I couldn't describe. It was like walking through my own personalized version of the post-apocalypse. I was finding doors that wouldn't open. The floor was strewn with tin cans and litter. The generators, uncared for, were making an odd rhythmic churring. And from deeper within came chugging, banging, and hissing sounds that had no place in a stable at all. This was a demoralizing, eerie, spook house version of Stable 2. Alright guys, we're gonna stop it right here, because this is an hour long, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to last with my really bad attention span. So we're gonna stop Chapter 5 right here, and we'll pick it up. I actually, I like Calamity now. I mean, he was a- I don't think she should- Little Pip should take on you know, what he did personally. If he did what he had to do, because he thought of- he thought- yeah. So Calamity is cool in my book. He's a gentle gentleman. Nice, cool dude. Alright guys, that's all we have today. I will be sure to get the next part of Chapter 5 out for you next week. Until next time guys, I'll see you later.